There's been a total of four major Fast and Furious video games, and over the years I've made individual videos about three of them, for reasons I'll never fully comprehend. The Fast and the Furious on PS2 from 2006 is a decent but very flawed racer that let me live out my knockoff Lightning McQueen in Tokyo Drift fantasies. Fast and Furious Crossroads from 2020 was more of an action driving thing that let me see Vin Diesel running on top of a space rocket firing on its side, and Fast and Furious Spy Race's Rise of Shifter came out in 2021, and it's such a forgettable kart racer based on the Fast Kids show that I forgot I even played it, let alone covered it. The one I haven't made a video on, so here we are for completion's sake, if not anything else, it's been bothering me, is called Fast and Furious Showdown, the second big crack at a fast game from 2013, and it's really bad, like really bad, just a poor video game across the board. It doesn't look like a game from 2013, being a 360 PS3 Wii U PC game that's harder on the eyes than the 2006 PS2 game, but bad graphics are the least of its problems. Allow me to introduce this mission. You play as Paul Walker's character Brian, leaning out the window of a Dodge Viper as you shoot the bad guys chasing you down. Uh, rather than driving the car yourself or having someone in the driver's seat, the car isn't running and you're instead attached by cable to a ram with Ludacris in it dragging you around. You can press a button at any time to switch between Brian and Luda, and the AI will control whoever you aren't playing as. The game starts you out as Brian, so I figured, okay, I'll let AI Luda tow me while I shoot, but it's like Ludacris is trying to screw you over. It's hysterical, like look at this, you, you won't be able to aim, you won't be able to beat the level, even Luda himself just seems to be driving into walls for some inexplicable reason. Strategy number two, I'll drive, Brian can shoot. Uh, problem here is Brian can't shoot as well as I can and he'll let himself take too much damage. So naturally, strategy number three is to try a hybrid of one and two, just switching on the fly between driving and shooting. Best of both worlds, except it's actually the worst of both worlds. Uh, as Brian, Luda's trying to screw you over, so you'll switch over to Luda to fix his mess and then Brian will take too much damage. It, there's just no winning. Strategy number four was forced upon me because the game just just seemed to mysteriously glitch out and the ram got stuck in third gear. I drove slow because I couldn't not drive slow, and it worked. I, I beat the level driving slow, partly because the AI opponents matched my speed, so when they crashed into me, it wasn't as damaging. And then I wasn't rewarded with the bonus objective of beating the mission only as Luda, even though I basically did, because the game forced me to start as Brian, which itself happens because I was simply playing through the campaign like any normal person would, just hopping from five minute mission to five minute mission with loading screens and the occasional cutscene in between. Uh, if you want to select a character before a mission, you have to exit all the way to the main menu, select the mission from Mission Select, and then pick because you don't get to see the character select screen otherwise. Which is especially a problem because of these massive difficulty spikes where some missions are borderline impossible to beat unless you customise your car or change character before starting, which again, you can only do by quitting out to the main menu and sitting through the loading screens. And you won't know if a mission is borderline impossible until you've given it a few tries, as the game randomly flips between being frustratingly hard and condescendingly easy. When you're not driving or shooting, you're sort of doing this thing where you can jump onto a truck and sometimes back again when the game asks you to. It's not something you can do whenever you want. It, it feels more like a scripted, mind-numbing QTE sequence where you're constantly mashing a single button to maintain balance. There's just not a lot to it. Relying on shoddy AI teammates is just a problem way too often. You'll usually be given the option of either driving or shooting from the one car, but you'll quickly figure out that you'll want to drive almost every time, not only because the shooting isn't particularly fun, but because the AI drivers are just horrific. The second mission in the game recreates the vault scene from Fast Five, and it's just chaos. Uh, two cars are attached by cable to a vault, you're in one and AI in the other, and you must drag the vault through the level while being chased by cops. 
The vault itself just flicks weightlessly around everywhere, except sometimes it seems to arbitrarily decide that it actually has weight and so it stops you in your tracks and if you stop for too long you get arrested and it's game over. Your AI teammate is constantly crashing, as they always do in every mission, which drags you back towards them, stops you, you'll get arrested, game over. The frame rate's going nuts, physics objects are flying everywhere, cops are smashing into things. There's one point where the road splits in two and your AI teammate seems to go left every single time, just dragging you along with them. Too bad, so sad if you wanted to commit the cardinal sin of going right. In Fast Five, the cars in this scene are being driven by Paul Walker and Vin Diesel, but Vin Diesel isn't actually in this game, much to his credit, I guess. Only a slice of the family is here, so Diesel is replaced in this scene with Ludacris. At first I assumed this wasn't actually a depiction of the Fast Five scene because it comes across as more of an homage, but slowly I realised that this entire game is trying to retell the whole franchise. Keyword there is trying. Almost all of the short cutscenes are set in this dark detective room that gives off the impression it's trying to cast shadows over how cheap it all looks, and the only characters that appear in the cutscenes are Gina Carano's and Ava Mendez's. Everyone else presents as a barely animated in-game model and profile picture. The acting across the board ranges from passable to terrible, which is weird because the cast is a mix of the actual actors from the film and of replacement actors. I like Hobbs style. Going old school with the folders. Paper files can't be hacked. Also weird is bringing back Ava Mendez's character here. She was a major character in the second film, and her only other appearance in the series was in the post credit stinger in Fast Five. At the time, that felt like a tease for her to appear in Fast Six, but she wasn't in Fast Six or in any other film. Instead, she, or rather her character, because Ava Mendez isn't doing the voice work here, appears in this game, which released alongside Fast Six. To us sickos who are actually into the Fast anime lore, there's dozens of us, uh, it's very random and amusing that they actually delivered on bringing her back but in the most sketchy and barely canon way possible. Carano and not Mendez will just sort of say something along the lines of, so what were the family doing in Mexico? And then you'll play through a bunch of missions in Mexico, alluding that they're calling back to the events of the fourth film, which was set in Mexico. But the weird part is, most of the things that you actually do in this game have virtually nothing to do with what happened in any of the films. Uh, the vault level obviously ties in, and the handful of Luke Evans levels seem to represent the shenanigans that the evil family was doing before Fast 6, but other than that you're just sort of doing random unexplained things. Races, stealing trucks, blowing up trucks, pulling down towers, dragging Dodge Vipers behind you, lord knows why you aren't just driving it. The reality is it's just a bunch of fast flavoured random arcade driving missions strung together with no thread and a lot of frustration. Also, they keep shoving Brian and Han in American muscle cars which is deeply upsetting. The game is over in about three hours, the car handling is weird, and all up it's just a bizarre, cheap feeling, rushed project that just doesn't come together. But for all my complaining about the bad AI teammates, maybe I've been complaining about them too much because this is actually a split screen co-op game. And the co-op is surprisingly fun, at least at first. Like dragging the safe around goes from being frustrating to funny, as does dragging your friend around in that Dodge Viper, even if you're laughing at the game rather than with it. Uh, most surprising, I think, is how much better the truck hopping quick time sequences are. One player has to drive near the truck while the other doesn't screw up the QTEs, and it genuinely feels like you have to cooperate and play skillfully. It's not long before the glitches and the bad design and the weird car handling take over, but it works as a short burst of shoddy fun. Which is why I think this really should have been a full-blown arcade game with an arcade cabinet. It even has the look of like a cheap arcade game. It's so simple that anyone can pick it up immediately, being surrounded by a racing seat and a sound system and fast branding and maybe some light guns would add so much novelty, and framing the game as a ridiculous social co-op arcade game that costs two bucks to play, rather than a home console release, feels far more appropriate for what this is. But sadly, this isn't an arcade game. In fact, this is actually kind of a 3DS game. See, the developer of this, Firebrand Games, 
specialised in DS games. The vast majority of their releases were DS or 3DS games up until this point. Fast and Furious Showdown also came out on 3DS, and it's virtually the exact same game as it is on consoles and PC. The crashing physics feel slightly simplified, jumps and physics objects have been removed, and obviously the visuals are vastly downgraded to the point where it doesn't even really look good for a 2013 3DS game, but otherwise the handling feels virtually the same, and all the levels, cutscenes, and bells and whistles are here. Now maybe this is a cynical way of looking at things, and I don't intend to say this with any animosity towards the developers because, you know, contract work sucks and it's almost always the suits higher up to blame for shoddy games, but this all gives off the impression that the console game is just a cheap 3DS game with a new coat of paint, like you're playing a 3DS port. I've never liked the phrase cash grab, but there's a cheapness to this whole project that feels very exploitative. So yeah, Showdown isn't good, critics trashed it, fans trashed it, content creators made fun of it, hi, hello, and then we all forgot about it. I can finally tick this off and move on with my life. And now that I have sunk my teeth into all these fast games, it got me thinking about what a good fast game actually looks like. It seems surprising that this series hasn't had a good run with video games. It just seems so primed for it. Looking closer, I think you can make some sense of it. Video games are very iterative, like most big budget games are built on top of a hit game that came before it. And when you look at the two more competent fast games, those being the PS2 game and the one based on the kids show, they are very derivative racing games. They look at Need for Speed or Mario Kart, and they build around those proven frameworks, proving why those frameworks are proven frameworks. Proven frameworks. But Showdown and Crossroads, the two sketchier fast games to put it nicely, try to represent the franchise as the stunt driving heisting blockbuster series that it is today, and the reality is there's a far smaller pool of games that they can draw upon. Like what are some hit stunt driving games? Are there any recent ones? Like, like put yourself in the shoes of someone designing a big budget Fast and Furious game based on one of the recent films, and ask yourself which games do you use as inspiration? My mind goes to the honorary Fast and Furious game Wheelman, which wasn't a hit and didn't play that well. Uh, Pursuit Force was a decent PSP game with some jumping between vehicles, but it feels very quaint nowadays. Uh, then there's GTA V, which dabbled in some set PC action driving missions, but they're very simple and you can't imagine making a whole game out of them, and the same can be said about Forza Horizon's scripted set piece missions. Maybe you can look towards more like precision stunt driving games, games like Trackmania or Stuntman or maybe some of the stuff in Beam NG Drive, but they'd take a lot of rejigging to look like a fast game, and it's hard to see them being AAA smash hits. The driver games, and especially Driver San Francisco with the character switching stuff, all get closer to something Fast and Furious could plug into, and maybe they could serve as groundwork, but it's far shakier ground than something like Mario Kart or Need for Speed. The game that I think mirrors the Fast franchise most is actually Uncharted 4, especially the main chase sequence from it. It blends shooting, driving, and fist fighting in the same spectacular and jovial and cinematic way the Fast movies do. If Uncharted 4 starred Vin Diesel and had more sequences like this, you can sort of see it working. The problem is, Uncharted 4 is one of the most expensive games ever developed, in one of the most popular video game franchises, developed by one of the most talented and experienced teams, and it came out after a decade of building upon the Uncharted series. It's, it's really hard to see Fast and Furious demanding that same budget or team, especially with its track record of video game flops. So when I look at this game, and especially when I look at Crossroads, it feels like these games were all but doomed from the start. History will tell you that it's a massive challenge to make a story-driven action stunt driving game that not only plays well, but is also a massive hit, and so there just aren't many of them. I wish there were more, and if there ever is a hit Fast and Furious game, I'd wager it's far more likely to look like a Need for Speed game. To end on a positive note for a video that's been hard to say many positive things in, a part of me admires what Crossroads and Showdown were trying to do on some fundamental level, because they had to try and break new ground in a very unexplored genre. 
And there we wrap up the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's rare that I review a game that I think is flat out bad and couldn't really recommend to anyone, but here we are. I'm glad I got it out of the way. Um, thank you to my patrons. If you want an easy way to support me, you can go to my Patreon and, and send me a buck every month or just subscribe and comment and like and stuff, you know. I also just want to say that I am starting streaming or I have started streaming. I've done three streams at the time of this recording. Uh, over on my second channel, Micro Me, where I'll link somewhere. And basically what I'm doing is every single week on Thursday morning Sydney time, which is Wednesday evening for most of the rest of the world, I'm uh, just, just playing a game for about an hour. Just a random classic game. So far I've done Far Cry 2, uh, Jet Li's Rise to Honor, and Majesty the Fantasy Kingdom Sim. So pretty like generally obscure video games. I'm not a Fortnite streamer. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm just doing some some old games that I like. Uh, and it's, it's a lot of fun. You can see the old... Um, the old VODs, I hate that word, but you can see the VODs on my second channel if you want. Uh, but otherwise, tune in, go subscribe to that if you're interested. And uh, yeah, take care of yourselves, hope you enjoyed the video. Goodbye.